the Lord. My goodness. It's good to be in the house of the Lord now. I, I got some, I want to read some scriptures here. I got I to gotta love the word of God. Just, it's something about it. It's fattening. It makes you, mm. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake, and they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them. Come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, and at that the drought of fishes which they had taken. Here's the thing. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Amen. I want us to be fishermen tonight. Amen. I want us to throw our nets out like we've never done before. I want to get a hold to herself. Let's get to fishing, y'all. Come on, let's bring a big old net in. With that being said, Saturday at 1030, we're going to bring our nets and we're going to pray here in the sanctuary for about 30 minutes or so, however the Lord wants to, to deal with us, and we're going to go out at 11 o'clock, and we're going to throw some limb lines out, anybody know what limb lines are, and we're going to see what we can catch, amen? amen. We're going to use every arsenal we got, every bait in the tackle box we got, and we're going to see what we can do, amen? So we're outreach Saturday, 1030, and I encourage everyone to come out. It's going to be fun. We're going to stop and get us an ice chest full of drinks whatever we got to do, and we're going to uh, make it a fun afternoon Saturday trying to run some lines. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, hey, God, it, it doesn't matter how many times you've fished before. If you're a fisherman, you still want to go again. Hey, God, and I'm telling you, God put the fishing desire in every one of us. Some of us need to Go get it off the back burner. Praise God. We've got the fishing desire in the wrong place. We need to get it on the front burner because Jesus Christ made it very clear. Thank God that's the most important thing we're doing. Thank God. Uh, you know, it's good to have buildings. It's good to have a church. It's good to have fellowship, and all of those things are needful and good. But I'm telling you, the most important thing is fishing. Praise God. You know, the tragedy is, is there's a lot of guys that got a big old nice fishing boat. Thank God. They got all the stuff that goes on the fishing boat. Thank God. They take it out once a year. Praise God. So I'm telling you, it's not enough to have the equipment. Thank God. We've got the equipment. We've got what it takes to catch. Praise God. We just need to get it in the water. Praise God. We need to fish. God bless. Come on. Let's worship the Lord. God bless our praise team. Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Brother Sullivan. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Doesn't it feel good in the house of the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. Turn around to a couple hundred people. And tell them how thrilled that you are to be in the house of God. Okay, now for those of you that did not turn around and tell anybody that you're thrilled to be in the house of God, we're going to have a very special prayer meeting for you after service. And the Bible says, lay hands upon no man suddenly, so we're going to do it very slowly. <laughs> Amen. Brother Sullivan. Awesome. Awesome word tonight. Awesome word. Hallelujah. He, uh, he always does such a great job, and I love, I love just that, that even kill of his, of his voice. I mean, he's saying something every time that he, he opens his mouth, and, and you, have to, you have to listen because sometimes he's, he's a little soft-spoken. I wonder if he's that way at Walmart. Amen. But I tell you what, I, I like, you, you can hang on to what he says. You can hang on to the words that he speaks, and I, I love that. Praise God. Everybody said praise the Lord. Praise Isn't it good to be back in the pre presence of God again tonight? Amen. What a, and pastor's already mentioned it, what a wonderful weekend we had around here. And I was excited about seeing all the, the new faces Sunday morning. 
and uh, going through the cards and, and, and stuff like that. I'm, I'm excited about what God is going to do in the harvest that God is going to give us. Amen. The seed was planted Sunday. I said the seed was planted Sunday. Now what we've got to do is we've got to water. And Bible, the Bible says that God gives the increase. Amen. So, and what we have been doing the last couple of weeks on Wednesday night. This is our third Wednesday night in a row that we have been teaching on Bible studies. And we have been teaching a particular Bible study that, that I, I told you last week. This was not mine. I did not, uh, I did not write this. Brother Brett Cooley wrote this Bible study, What is Truth? But it covers what is truth. Amen. If you want to know what the Word of God says about truth, and when, when uh, the question was asked, what is truth, I'm glad I found out what truth is. Amen. Praise God. It's another tool in our toolbox of reaching folks. It's another tool that we can utilize on a day-to-day -day basis, and you don't, even, you don't even have to teach the whole Bible study to utilize the points of it because of the fact that it is... It's, it's, it's there, and it is the, the Word of God. Amen. Each one of us have got to be soul conscious. And all year long, and, and even back before the turn of the year, Pastor, and myself, and Brother Stan, we have, we've been encouraging folks to reach out and to touch somebody, to reach out and get a hold of somebody's life. And uh, I, I want us to be soul conscious. I want us to be harvest conscious. I want us to be evangelistic. Every one of us are called to be evangelist. We're to evangelize the world. Amen? Praise God. 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, the second verse says that we're living epistles, seen and read of all men. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful that God has called us out of the world of darkness into his marvelous light. Paul said, I'm an ambassador for Christ. Remember, and this is the saying, I love this saying, I'm just a nobody telling everybody about somebody that can save anybody and his name is Amen. I'm just a nobody but God's told me that I can tell everybody about somebody that can save anybody the, the person that you come in contact with on a day to day basis the person that you, you pass at, at Walmart on, on the aisle I know we're supposed to be social distancing but I, I still, you know, they still got their, their arrows up, and I still find people going the wrong way, and I even go the wrong way. It says one way, and, and I'm going the opposite way, and I don't find out I'm going the wrong way until I get the end of the aisle and find out I went the wrong way. Amen. And then I don't want to go back and go back down that aisle again, so I go down the other aisle. Amen. But I'm glad that God can save anybody. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But I say, what is truth? Pilate asked Jesus that question, what is truth? In John, the 18th chapter and the 38th verse, and you find that still 2,000 years later, people are still asking the question, what is truth? People are wanting to know. With there being so many different, different denominations, so many different churches, so many different uh, pastors, so many different religions, People are concerned about today, what is truth? I'm glad I've got truth today. I'm glad that I know truth today. Amen? Praise God. And we're going to just review for a short few moments here. There's four questions that we want people to consider whenever uh, we are teaching them this Bible study. Some say it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you are sincere. And the question is, can someone... Be sincerely wrong. And you can. You can be sincerely wrong. The word you find that the second question is doctrine important according to the word of God. And we know that doctrine is important according to the word of God. You find the third question, and all of these you're going to have in your hand tonight, all right? Are there false prophets today? Are there? You might be right, there are. Oh, Buddha was a man. I'm sure that he meant well. We're going to pray for his disciples lest they wind up in hell. That's a song, okay? I'm not just saying that. I know that's before some of our time. I look back. I looked at Brother Smith during uh, that first song that we sang about I'm different now, and I'm, 
I'm going, oh, my goodness, I've never heard that one. He said, that's an old one. Amen. I'm different now. I'm different. You're different now. God's done a marvelous work in your life. And according to the Word of God, what would you tell someone that asks you the question, what must I do to be saved? What would you tell somebody? We have already established the, the infallibility of the Word of God we have found that there's three ways that an, an individual can be lost. Number one, you could never hear the apostles' gospel. And you find that if it's hid to you, then you're lost. Number two, you could be deceived by a false prophet into believing something other than what the apostles preached. And if you are deceived, you are lost. Or the third way of being lost is after hearing what you do, or what to do, you do absolutely nothing. I don't want to be lost, folks. I said, I don't want to be lost. I want to be right with the Lord. And so we, we, we covered uh, the death, the burial, the resurrection. Uh, you find that in John, uh, Jesus uh, spoke that you must be born again. You've got to be born of the water and of the Spirit. He talked about in, in Luke, the 24th chapter, he opened their understanding that they could understand the Scripture. Uh, we find that still they have not received the Holy Ghost to this point. Even up until uh, Jesus told them in 20 and 22 of John, or 20 and 21 of John, he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. But they still did not receive the Holy Ghost at that point. He breathed into them that desire to receive the Holy Ghost, I believe. And when he breathed on them to the desire to receive the Holy Ghost, you find in Acts, the first chapter, they still did not receive the Holy Ghost. But he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. But this is what I like. You ready to open the Word of God tonight? Now you find where that in the, in the first book of Acts, in the 12th chapter, you find people that were gathered in the upper room praying for the Holy Ghost. The Bible says there was 120 people that were gathered there. It also tells us that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there. I want to tell us when and what happens when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Acts, the second chapter, verses 1 through 4. You find that this is the first time that anybody in the Word of God ever received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. No one had received the Holy Ghost to this point. The Holy Ghost had not been given yet. It had been prophesied that the Comforter was coming. It had been prophesied that he was going to baptize them with the Holy Ghost and fire, but they had not had the outpouring of the Holy Ghost to this point. But you find that for the first time, the Bible tells us in Acts, the second chapter, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, what was the sign that they had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? How did they know that another one had received the Holy Ghost? Because they heard them speak with tongues. Understand, Jesus said, you're going to hear a sound that's going to come. John, the third chapter, the third verse, the fifth verse, the seventh and the eighth verse. It talks about you must be born again. And he said whenever, whenever the sign does come, you're going to hear a sound. The sound that Jesus was talking about in John, the third chapter, is the sound that happened on the day of Pentecost when they were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They heard them speak with tongues. It tells us in verses 5 through 11, it tells us that there were 17 nations gathered there that day. In verse 12, it tells us that they were amazed at what they saw and heard. Verse 13 says they were accused 
of being drunk. Verses 14 through 16, Peter, the man with the keys to the kingdom of heaven, stood up and he began to preach and explain what was taking place on that day. And until they heard Peter preach, they did not believe that uh, uh, Jesus was truly the Christ. They didn't believe it until they heard Peter preach. Peter preached to them the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then in Acts the second chapter and the 37th verse, the Bible begins to talk about what their reaction was when they heard the message of the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? To this point, to this point, they were, they, they had been searching. He filled the ones that was in the upper room with the Holy Ghost. The ones that was on the outside looking in, seeing what was going on. They said, what's going on here? What's taking place? What do we have to do to receive the same thing that you've got? And Peter, remember, Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Remember those scriptures? Peter stood up and he said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Understand what he told them. He gave them an explicit plan. He gave them a road map. He gave them a manual. When they said, what shall we do? What is truth is what they were asking. Remember, they're asking the man that had the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What is truth? What must we do? And the man with the keys to the kingdom of heaven said, there's three steps. And you're not saved until all three are met. You've got to repent of your sins. Can I tell you, repentance alone isn't sufficient. I can be sorry all day long for things that I do, but until there's a change that takes place. I, I don't know if, I, if I've used the analogy here before, but, but I've often used it in Bible studies, is I can write up here on, on a big blackboard, Okay, we'll have a big blackboard. We'll go back to, to teaching school. A big chalkboard. And I can write up there, Brother Paul is ugly. Now everybody will agree with me on that one. Right. Everybody agrees with me on that. But it doesn't matter. It's the attitude that I had in writing it down. Brother Paul is ugly. I am wrong. Brother Paul, will you forgive me? Will you forgive me? Will you please forgive me for saying that you're ugly? Guess what? It's still there on the blackboard. You can still see it. Brother Paul can tell me 100 times a day, 470 times a day, 490 times a day. He can tell me that he forgives me, but it's still there. What is going to remove it? Repentance is not going to remove it. Repentance is simply going to make us feel better about ourselves. Hello? He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, the word remission meaning removal. So what God does when we repent of our sins and then we're baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of those sins, what he does is he washes or he cleans that big old board. They're left in the water. Every sin that you've ever committed is left in that water. And then, you know what he's going to do? He's going to give you power to overcome ever saying that again with the power of the Holy Ghost. You, it's not enough just to repent. It's not enough just to be baptized in Jesus' name. But you've got to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost so that you can have power to overcome the sin 
that's going to present itself again in your life. Who can receive the Holy Ghost? For the promise is unto you and to your children and to them that far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. How do we know that God is still calling people to receive the Holy Ghost today? Because we had one give the Holy Ghost this last week. We had one baptized Sunday morning in Jesus' name. It's still happening. It's still being poured out. The Holy Ghost is still being poured out. I don't care what preacher says that it's not real. It's real because it happened to me. I have a personal testimony of what God did in my life. Amen. So let's cover these three steps into the kingdom of God. And we're going to do this very quickly. Repentance is turning away from sin and turning to God. If I'm not mistaken, it is the Canadian Army or their the Canadian Armed Forces that when they are marching, instead of saying about face, they say repent. You know why? Because when you repent, you turn away. It's an about face. It's a changing of the direction that you're going. And that's what repentance is. It's turning away from sin and turning to God. 1 John 1 and 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28 and 13, Solomon said, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whosoever forsaketh or confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 7 and 10, he talks about godly sorrow. Godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. So that's repentance. Baptism, Mark 16 and 16. The word of God says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be Saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. First Peter 3, 20 and 21 says, Bath, uh, Baptism doth also now save us. Matthew 28 and 19 is the great commission where that Jesus said, Go ye therefore and, all, uh, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name, everybody say name, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Wow, is that confusing? No. It's singular. There's a name. I've got a name. You've got a name. We have different positions and different ways that we manifest ourselves, but we only have one name. I can give you a check, folks, and I'm going to write you a check for $5,000. How many wants it? Sister Brenda was the first one that raised her hand. <laughs> even, even a little bit after Pastor, I know I've seen Pastor raising his, but Sister Brenda shot hers up way fast. But if I just give you a blank check with $5,000 on it made out to her, and she takes it to her bank, y'all gonna cash it? Yeah, she's gonna make sure my name's on it. <laughs> yeah. Take it to the bank. I'm going to do nothing with it. They're going to look at it and laugh at you because it don't have a name. But if you have a name on there and the account's good and there is $5,000 there, she's going to walk away from there having $5,000. But there's got to be a name. The same thing applies at baptism. There's got to be a name that's applied. I'll tell you something. 32 years ago, soon be 33 years ago, in just a couple of weeks, be 33 years ago. I asked, actually, you know what, let's get the facts straight. 38, 39 years ago, I asked a young lady to marry me. And she told me she would. I started evangelizing. And we were more off than we were on for the next six years. We could be celebrating 39 years of happy, blissful marriage. But instead, it, what? But what? I have to forgive. Why is she always, why does she? I did forgive you. I asked you the second time. 
<laughs> I mean, we could be celebrating 39 years of a beautiful marriage. Instead, we're only celebrating 33 years because we kept breaking up during that time. Because I was always gone. And we didn't have FaceTime back then, folks. We had, we had snail mail. And Ma Bell, and it costs 52 cents a minute to talk to her. That was a lot back then. Especially when she talks as, I mean, whenever, whenever you talk in a long conversation. $5.20 20, $5 for a 10 minute conversation. But hey, she's worth it. And she's still worth it. Amen. Nothing to be blessed there, brother. I mean, that's just that's just the facts. <laughs> worth her weight. That, thank you, Pastor. She is worth her weight. She didn't weigh much then, though. But I mean, anyway, I mean, she still doesn't weigh much. But <laughs> let me see. That wasn't in my notes. <laughs> what is the name of the Father? What is the name of the Son? What is the name of the Holy Ghost? You have scripture for it, you might be right, I do. Matthew 1 and 21, and his name shall be called. John 5, 43, 10, 30 and 8, uh, uh, 10 and 30, and 10 and 38, and 14 and 9. The name of the Father is. He said, I come in my Father's name. John 14 and 26, he said, I'm going to send back the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, in my name. What is his name? John says in John, 1 John 5 and 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are... Colossians 2, 9 and 10, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Verse 10. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. We are not complete until we take upon ourselves the name of Jesus at baptism. So don't be afraid of Matthew 28 and 19. That's a good verse. Use it. Use it. Acts 2 and 38, the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Acts 8, 14 through 17, the Bible talks about Philip at Samaria. And the Bible says they baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. In Acts 10, 44 through 48, Cornelius was baptized in the name of the Lord. In Acts 19, 1 and 5, 1 through 5. I'm going to read these. Acts 19, 1 through 5. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, verse 2, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Verse 3. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Nowhere in the Bible is it ever recorded that anybody was ever baptized, calling on the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But it does show where they baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. They were baptized in the name of Jesus. Multiple, multiple instances. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And so we've established that they baptized in the name of the Lord. Matthew 18 and 16, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Matthew 28, 19, is the only verse in the Bible to use this, bapt this baptismal formula or phrase, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. 
while many verses repeat the formula in Acts 2, 38, Matthew 28, 19, and, uh, 19 and 8, I can't even read my writing. 28 and 19 is the uh, more indirect passage which we interpret in light of the more direct scriptures in the book of Acts. In other words, they complement 28 and 19. You won't find a separation. You won't find a division in the word of God. More scriptures on water baptism in Romans 6, 3 through 5. They were baptized into Jesus Christ. Galatians 1 or 3 and 27. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Colossians 3 and 17. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So let me ask you the question tonight. Does the baptismal formula really matter? Yes, it does. The Bible places so much importance on water baptism that it should be done exactly the way the Bible teaches it. Number two, we should follow the example of the first apostolic church. The first church baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus. We should also. Tradition is an inadequate substitute for biblical teaching. Can I say that again? Tradition is an inadequate substitute for biblical teaching. Number four, obedience to God's word will cause us to follow it exactly how the Bible teaches it. Refusal is disobedience and rebellion against God's word. Paul had to rebaptize the disciples of John the Baptist. If, they, if he had to rebaptize the disciples of John, shouldn't you be done right? One baptism is sufficient as long as it's done the right way. It's got to be done in the name of Jesus. Baptism is for the remission, the forgiveness, the removal of sins. And there's no other name that remits sin besides the name of of Jesus. Why would anyone hesitate to take on the name of the one who died for them? And that's where I was going to walk go when I got all sidetracked on my wife. If she took on my name, she had to she had to drop Peliquin off of her name. Not Pelican, Peliquin. She had to drop that. We had to go to the Social Security office, Brother Smith. She had to change her name on her Social Security card to Markintel, Lisa Ann Markintel. She took on my name. But I tell you, the same thing applies at baptism. When we unite with Christ, we take on his name. Acts 2 and 4. They spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts 8, 17 through 19, Simon the sorcerer, he saw the miraculous sign. What was the miraculous sign that he saw? They, he heard them speak with tongues. Acts 10, 44 through 48, for they heard them speak. At the house of Cornelius, they heard them speak with tongues. Acts 19, 1 through 6, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues. 1 Corinthians 14 and 22. Tongues are for a sign. You know what the sign is? It's a sign to the unbeliever that they've received the Holy Ghost. They know that they've received the Holy Ghost when they hear them speak with tongues. Mark 16 and 17. Jesus said these signs would follow them that believe, that they shall speak with new tongues. You know what? We take the, that other part of that verse. We take that. We don't want to take this one. It's not jabberish, folks. It's another language that only can be spoken by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost when it feels alive. And you'll know they receive the Holy Ghost. And it won't be some jabberish. It won't be, see my 
Tai, Tai, Mai, Tai, Honda, Suzuki, Kawasaki. I'm telling you, folks. I'm telling you. I don't believe in that stuff. I don't believe in that stuff. And don't you be guilty of telling someone they received the Holy Ghost. They'll know when they receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know how they'll know? Because they have heard themselves speak with tongues. And so you ask the three questions, and I close. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? How were you baptized? And the third question is, if someone came up to you and asked the question, what does it take to be saved? What would you be able to tell them? And I tell you tonight, there's only one thing that you can tell them when they get through, when you get through with this, this Bible study. It's nothing but Scripture. It's not my interpretation of the scripture it's the word interprets itself all right and so you have the word of god there and if you will take this bible study and if you will teach it teach it it's easy to teach if you can read you can teach this bible study and if you, even if you can't read you listen to the last two lessons, last, last Wednesday and, la and tonight, and I promise you, you will be able to teach this Bible study. Utilize it, folks. It's a tool that God has given to us in this day and age that we can teach to people and they can understand the Word of God. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. I want us to lift our hands all across this building tonight, and I want us to ask God, let's thank God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost that he's given us. Let's thank him for the truth that he's given to us, the truth that he's revealed to us. Come on. In the name of Jesus, we love you tonight, God. We're so thankful for the word of God that you've given to us. We're thankful that you have answered that question in our mind. What is truth? That you have given us the answer to that question. We're thankful for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. We're thankful for repentance tonight. We're thankful for water baptism in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. And we are thankful tonight that you have baptized us with your spirit that we can overcome sin in our life through your power in Jesus' name. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Praise God. Right, we enjoyed that. Enjoyed the word of God. It's always fresh. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Uh, well, greet one another any way you feel like greeting one another. And you're dismissed in Jesus' name. Praise God. Bible study in your hands. Thank God and what Brother Mark